Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be comparing a Ford Transit to a Mercedes Sprinter. Now, these two particular vans that I picked out are pretty similar from a pricing perspective and then also from a spec perspective, so it should be a pretty good comparison for you van fanatics. Now, before we get into the video, I'm going to include a link to both of the dealerships that originally provided me with both of the vehicles in the description down below. And then on a side note, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, I'm going to include a link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into the comparison. So starting under the hood of the Transit, we have a turbocharged 3.5 liter V6 it goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 310 horsepower and then 410 pound feet of torque. The standard engine for this vehicle, however, is a notch aspirated 3.5 liter V6. It's good for 275 horsepower and then 262 pound feet of torque. I recommend just going with the EcoBoost just because that engine feels so strong, especially in a cargo van. Now, moving from that to the Sprinter, we have a 3 liter V6 diesel that goes through a 7 speed automatic transmission. It's good for 188 horsepower and 325 pound feet of torque. Uh, there is also a four cylinder diesel you can get, but again, this is the preferred engine because of the extra horsepower and torque it has over the four cylinder. Now, going from that to the front of the transit, uh, you can see first off with the hood, notice the venting on either side, definitely a cool aesthetic. And then we've got the daytime running lights here with the bi xenon headlamps. Also another cool aesthetic. You've got the fog lights there at the bottom, parking sensors integrated in the front end with the gigantic Ford logo. There's a camera there below the logo. And especially since this isn't finished in like a traditional color like white or black, I definitely think it looks great on a cargo van from an aesthetic perspective. Uh, and so yeah, I think, I think Ford did a really good job with the new transit design. Now going to the Sprinter, uh, you can see here, uh, very tall obviously. And I love how you've got like that uh, molding there at the top. But notice the difference between uh, Sprinter with LED lights and without. Uh, the LED lights definitely help out with the overall aesthetic. But we still have venting here at the top. It's kind of just like a cargo van thing, right? Got the Mercedes logo there with some more chrome in the grill. And then, yeah, I really like the LED light package because it just definitely makes it look a lot more upscale. I mean, like, look at that. The other one doesn't look bad, but like the LEDs look cooler. Fog lights down below, and then you can see there with the front bumper and the parking sensors. And then you can see a little camera there at the front as well. And again, I think that uh, Mercedes just knows how to make a good looking cargo van. Now popping here to the side of the Transit, uh, this one has like, I think it's called the Adventure Package or whatever. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong, but basically it's kind of like uh, an off-road package. You can see the wheels are all blacked out. And then the tires are not crazy aggressive, but slightly more than normal and you see the front suspension notice the plastic molding continues all along the bottom and then you have like that random like body painted portion right there down below it which is kind of interesting i always thought this is weird that you have to like open up the door to fuel it it's so like <laughs> i don't know it's just interesting and then popping to the rear you can see still utilizes leaf springs with the transit and then taking a few steps back here's your full side view of the transit definitely you know pretty decent sized cargo van and then here is the sprinter which goes for more of like a luxury appearance uh, from a wheel perspective uh, if there was a thing for a cargo van and you can see the tires there with the front suspension and then notice there with the fender and you can see again with the plastic cladding and then notice the mirrors as well same material and you can see from a full side view perspective I'm pretty sure this one was a little bit longer. Uh, they're both 2500s, but I'm pretty sure this one was a longer wheelbase than the Ford. We'll see what the window stickers at the end of the video. And there's leaf springs at the back. And then you can see here with the key fob for the Ford, you've got uh, not Ford's most like upgraded key fob, but it's still, you know, pretty cool looking. And uh, just like most cargo vans, right? You've got these swing out doors here in the rear. I love how you have a handle to help with closing it from the interior. And uh, they lock into place pretty yeah, easily. You definitely do have to kind of like fiddle with it for a second to make sure you're in the right place. Uh, notice there you've got like the bumper step that you can like step onto. But uh, I'm tall enough that I was just like, you know what? We're just going to go over that if we're going to make it a little bit easier. Uh, this one already has the um, flooring, so you don't have to worry about scratch and paint and all that. And you can see space is great. Uh, that's one of the big benefits of cargo vans, right? You just have tons of space in the 
interior. And this one had quite a bit um, of height as well. Like uh, pretty much like most people will be able to stand up completely straight in this uh, cargo van, which is great, right? If you wanted to live out of it, you definitely would want to be able to do that. And uh, the other thing that I like about the uh, transit here is that you get, and this is most cargo vans, right? You can do windows or no windows, but like you have like all the window slots there if you wanted to like punch stuff out, which is pretty cool. Now this is cool. Automated door, which obviously is like something you see on a bunch of minivans, but you don't see that on cargo vans typically. And so I thought that was a pretty cool feature that Ford's added to the transit to kind of just make it feel a little bit more upscale and just, I mean, that's a nice practical thing to have instead of having to swing a big heavy door there on the side. So I think that's a big plus that they've added that to the transit. And then with the back doors, you always have to close them in the correct order, right? So uh, just kind of remember that. And moving from that to the rear of the transit, uh, normal cargo van rear, so notice it's like completely vertical and you've got gigantic taillights. Like, look how big those taillights are. It's crazy. And, of course, we're seat bridge down there at the bottom. And then once we have our all-wheel drive EcoBoost badge. And then going back over to the Sprinter. So, you guys can see here on the key fob with the lock and unlock. And uh, notice with the doors, it seems like they're... Uh, just as easy to place and you have like a little handle there on the inside with that so still just as practical as what you have over in the transit uh, this one uh, just like the transit doesn't really have any windows uh, it seems like most uh, dealerships have been ordering out vans just with no windows because you can actually add windows after the fact but it's more annoying to get rid of windows than add them i mean both situations are frustrating if you change it but i think it's easier to add windows than take them out from what i've seen and uh, you guys can see, you have to step up. Uh, notice we got flooring in this one as well. So that's another big plus. You're not just stepping on exposed paint like I've seen in a lot of cargo vans. I will say the flooring in the Sprinter does look a little bit more upscale. It's not just like a mat, basically. It looks, you, you can see it just um, sturdier. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but it just does. And then here's the uh, door from the interior. Like the, you've got a little latch right there so you can open it up from the inside which is definitely, uh, you know, a nice plus if you're trying to get out of the van, right? Um, and uh, something else to mention is, uh, you, you know, room in there was pretty good from a headroom perspective, if that makes sense. And, of course, again, close them in order. This one's easier to know which one's in order because you have the Mercedes logo on the one door panel, which I thought was actually uh, pretty cool. So then you're like, okay, Mercedes logo last. But, you know, opening up the door, you can see, uh, you know, normal cargo van stuff, easy access, right? And, uh, I, I, you know, I think that uh, we'll eventually see more automated doors in the cargo van segment. And then just finishing things up here with the rest of the rear. Uh, you can see the badges there on the back and then giant taillights. I do think these taillights are a little bit more stylized than the Transit. Of course, got the camera there at the very top with all cargo vans, so you have a huge view. But, yeah, you know, normal vertical aesthetic from a rear end perspective. And then here's a door panel. Now you're gonna notice pretty basic from a material standpoint. Again, you gotta remember this is a cargo van, so it's not like it's gonna have like tons of plush leather or anything, but you got blind spot monitoring. Now you can get leather seats. Um, this particular van was a custom order and they spec'd it out with cloth seats because they live in California. And so that's kind of uh, what they wanted to do. They didn't want the leather that would get all hot. That's the pedal layout down below with the cup holder. You got the parking brake as well and then you can see like the mirror adjustment like controls you know all that normal practical car stuff and a cup holder there inside which is definitely practical now popping over to the sprinter you can see you've got a little bit of padding there on the top so that's definitely nice that's a big plus over the transit and then there's a quick look at the gigantic mirrors you've got your seat adjustments on the side of the door and just like in normal mercedes-benz fashion right and then you can see the window controls there and tons of storage space. And then you got the leather seats here at the front with the Sprinter. Uh, notice you got your lumbar right there. Normal pedals down below. And then you got your light control parking brake there off to the side. Got the cool Mercedes vents that are circular that I'm a huge fan of, actually. Now popping from that back into the Transit. Got the flip out key fob, of course. Can never live without those. 
Now, here's the steering wheel. Um, you got nice uh, padding on the steering wheel itself. Got some stitching there at the center. Controls for center stack, phone controls, voice command controls. This does have adaptive cruise control as well. Got your volume controls. You know, your regular stocks there on the steering wheel, like the windshield wiper, turn signal, all that fun stuff. And then here is the gauge cluster. So analog gauges, for the most part, you do have a screen there in the center, which you can scroll through different bits of info, like you can see fuel economy, for example, with the van. Uh, you know, pretty self-explanatory. It's not Ford's newest gauge cluster, but gets the job done, and that's all you really need. Now, here's the crazy part. We've got a massive infotainment system now in the transit. As you can see, the bird's eye view, and then notice the zoom-in function right there at the camera, which is kind of needed because... <laughs> It's so high up, uh, it's because you know it's at the top of the van. It's the best place to put it, right? So you can see everything that's happening. Uh, but yeah, great camera system. Like the fact you have a 360 view with a cargo van helps out because it's a big vehicle. Uh, it's not super difficult to park actually, but it, it's it's a big vehicle. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, you can see the drive modes here. I love the animations. This was like one of the coolest things, and I, I think it's awesome that Ford actually spent the money because like there's no other ford model that has these animations for their drive modes and so it's like this is just for the transit that they spent the money to have these animations built out and i don't know i think they look pretty cool kind of reminds me again of a video game it seems like a lot of manufacturers are doing that to i think kind of play to younger generations that have you know only lived with video games pretty much but yeah overall uh great infotainment system it's easy to use response time's great and it's crazy to see that in a cargo van nowadays got the manual shift function there with the shifter for the 10-speed automatic a couple more cup holders you can see like cup holders everywhere got the armrest there the center portion and then you know normal glove box and again you can see pretty basic from a material standpoint but no tons of storage there on the dash and then another charging port that's another thing that's cool about cargo vans they just have storage everywhere they can and then at the top as well with the little sun visors you can see more storage here. So again, another plus. It's kind of like a little attic for the uh, front area. Now here's a window sticker on this Transit. Uh, like I said, this one was a custom order. And so it's got some interesting options added to it. Um, but it's, you know, pretty much, it's pretty much fully loaded other than the fact that it, it doesn't have leather seats. That's the only thing that would technically make it like not... Uh, fully loaded but in my opinion this is this is just you know fully loaded um, but you guys can see here with all of the packages the pricing there with the base price and the total price is just under sixty thousand dollars fifty eight thousand seven hundred popping back over to the sprinter Ooh, got some cool stuff happening here now here's a steering wheel which is just like full-on luxury car seriously from a material standpoint and from an aesthetic standpoint like they just you know, took the steering wheel out of their normal luxury cars and put it in this so it has like the little button to control the infotainment system, which is pretty cool on the steering wheel. And then you've got like your cruise control there on the other side and then control for the center stack. Paddle shifters there on the back end. You can see the little turn signal windshield wiper stock and then we have the normal Mercedes column shifter. And yeah, definitely, definitely interesting. I will say that. It looks great though, it looks amazing. And then here is the center gauge cluster. So analog gauges on either side, and then you have that screen in the center. And it'll give you different bits of info, similar to what you have with the transit uh, on the Sprinter and you know, like navigation radio, all that stuff. You know, what a normal center gauge cluster basically shows you information wise. And then, you know, big infotainment system, solid resolution on the camera system as well, just like we had over in the transit and uh, touchscreen, just like the Transit, uh, which uh, if you guys are wondering, it, it's more responsive, it's just that it has plastic covering over it and I'm wearing haptic feedback gloves, so there's like two layers to block back, uh, you know, it picking up my finger, which is crazy that it still picked it up, I think. So it shows you how responsive it is. But yeah, it's cool that it has a lot of different camera views. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, uh, since it's Mercedes newer unit, it's great from a response time perspective. It's, it looks fantastic, it's easy to use. And I think both of them just have great infotainment systems. This one definitely looks more more integrated, I'd say, because they have like the climate controls integrated into it and everything. And I don't know, it looks like it kind of makes a little bit more sense. And it's like for like the safety tech stuff. And you can like, you got the shortcut buttons there at the bottom, which again adds to the practicality. Down below, you got the climate controls. 
as well. And then you can see a bunch of cup holders down below that, tons of storage space. And then obviously nothing there in the center. Of course, we've got our armrest there. Always got to have that with a nice leather on it. And uh, then you can see there's like nothing down there. They don't, it doesn't have like a traditional glove box that I could find, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, I, I, I can't explain that one. So uh, if you guys know why, then you can let us know. But yeah, I can't really explain that one. And then popping up to the very top. Again, you got the sun visor situation. And then you got the storage space there up above in the, again, van attic. That's what we will call it. And of course, uh, you got the rest of the van. Just that's the thing that's weird about cargo vans is without a partition, it's just so big. In the interior. Uh, but here's a window sticker. Uh, so yeah, this one is a little bit because it said yeah, the Ford was like 146 inch, and this is 170 inch. So I guess this one is a bit longer. Uh, but you can see all the options on this particular one from an equipment standpoint. Uh, and then you can see the total MSRP there, 67,000. Uh, so there is like a nine thousand dollar price difference between both of the vans, and so uh, a couple of things I want to mention. First off, that particular Sprinter was not a four x four; that was just a two wheel drive Sprinter. Uh, the four x fours are very hard to uh, come by. If you guys are wondering, obviously the um, Transit was all wheel drive. So yeah, I mean this is this is gonna you know this is gonna be a tough choice. I feel like these are the most comparable vans out there. The Ram Promaster they don't make a 4x4 or all-wheel drive version at all. And so it's pretty much like Mercedes versus Ford at this point from a cargo van perspective, in my personal opinion, until Ram, you know, kind of updates things a little bit more with the Transit and gives it uh, four-wheel drive. But yeah, you have two completely different approaches, right? You have a more modern all-wheel drive system and a more modern type engine, you know, having the EcoBoost engine in the Ford, whereas over in the Sprinter, you have, you know, more old school four wheel drive system and then a diesel engine. And so it, it, that's just going to depend which route you want to go from that perspective. Do you want the diesel or do you want the gas engine, right? The Ford is quicker, but right, you got, you got good amounts of torque from that uh, diesel engine. And again, it drives like a diesel. You guys, if you guys have driven a diesel, you know, that's a nice feeling with all that torque. And then from a feature perspective, you know, both of them are pretty, pretty close, right? Uh, obviously having that automatic door with the transit was pretty cool. Um, but other than that, I mean, super similar. And then, yeah, there is a $9,000 price difference. But again, uh, the Sprinter did have, uh, that was a little bit of a slightly larger Sprinter. So I think that's part of the price difference. And yeah, you are going to pay a little bit for the Mercedes uh, brand name. That is for sure. And so, yeah, it's just interesting to see them side by side there and to see all the different specs. But I want you guys to let me know which one uh, you would choose out of uh, both of the vans. And I think that the cargo van segment's only gonna get more competitive now as time goes on because these fans are just getting so popular.